Good evening. This is Ronald Coleman inviting you to join Mrs. Coleman and myself for the next half hour when our sponsor, the Joseph Schlitz Brewing Company of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, presents The Halls of Ivy. Now, The Halls of Ivy. Welcome again to Ivy. Ivy College, that is, in the town of Ivy, USA. It's morning in the household of the William Todd Hunter Halls, and the doctor is sitting at his desk. His wife, Victoria, enters to uh, overhear the mutterings that invariably seem to accompany the president's perusal of the morning mail. It's ridiculous. Preposterous. Sounds as if the mail is up to its usual standard, Toddy. Or is it worse? Oh, no, no worse. A little duller, perhaps. Mostly advertisements. Now, just think of the appalling waste, the expenditure of paper and energy, the hours of secretarial work, the wear and tear on the throats of house dogs barking at thousands of mailmen. Yes, but the... think of the profits of the paper and the dog food people. And the taxes they pay on the profits they make from the sales of the articles they sell to the people who don't need them, and the big dividends they send to the stockholders who are thus able to send their sons and daughters to Ivy, who will grow up to make better shoes and finer paper, and finally bring bigger taxes. All right, Vicky, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. You can, you can breathe now. Okay, Chief. <laughs> I must say I admire the way in which you tortured the subject of a dull morning's mail into a promotional plan for increasing our student enrollment. Well, thank you. It, it was nothing, really. I mean, Anyone with my knowledge of technological processes could have done it. You see, when examined closely, inflation and its effect on our capitalistic structure... Uh, Vicky, is, Vicky, please. Well, you, you don't care to hear about the economic fabric of an industrial society? No, but... no, dear, no. Well, it's a good thing. I couldn't have gone on much longer. <laughs> uh, may I ask where you acquired this Roger Babson babble? Well, yes, <laughs> the, the Wall Street Journal. You left it lying about, and you know me, old Snoopy. Yeah, I'm a quick study, too. I can leaf through an old copy of the medical journal and know exactly how to treat a case of the Waldorf Syndrome. I feel that this discourse is getting away from me, but what is the Waldorf Syndrome? Well, it's a neurotic compulsion to peek into other people's newspapers. <laughs> and I got it bad. <laughs> Go on with the mail, darling. What's the one you got there? Oh, some long-winded thing. Go oh, read it, read it. Just have a look. While you may not be a connoisseur, such nonsense. Within the purely academic field, etc., 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 master spirit of his age, wasting my time. <laughs> Color and style unmatched, flawless technique. This is awful. For the benefit of Ivy, without any encumbrance. But this is wonderful. <laughs> and, and conceivably worth a hundred thousand dollars. A hundred grand? A hundred would be grand, Vicky, but this is a hundred thousand. <laughs> A grand is a thousand. Oh, I thought you said a hundred was grand. Well, well, never never mind, Toddy. Forget about my bad early training and tell me what it's all about. I mean, is it awful or is it wonderful? Well, it's certainly better than I thought. It's from a lawyer, Homer Benson, of the firm of Benson, 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 Willoughby and Benson. Oh, <laughs> oh Willoughby. I wonder if he spent Christmas alone. <laughs> uh, Benson is executive of the estate of the late Mrs. Charlotte Peters. Her husband was an Ivy graduate. And she was a French woman of some wealth. During the last war, he died while fighting with the French resistance, and she fled to this country. She has occupied her last few years in an effort to recover some of her family art treasures. And where does Ivy and the hundred grand, uh, I mean, thousand, come in? Well, in her will, she leaves what Mr. Benson describes in his letter as a superb and fully authenticated Goya painting to Ivy College. Mr. Benson himself is on his way here now to complete the necessary formalities. Oh, Tolly, how exciting. We couldn't have it in here, could we? Uh, to begin with, Vicky, uh, the painting is seven feet by five, oh. and we cannot raise the roof. Uh, at least, not any more than we did on Christmas Eve. <laughs> uh, secondly, Mr. Wellman and the Board of Governors would hardly approve. No, Mr. W and the BOG will have to decide whether it hangs in, in Emerson Hall or the new Ivy Art Centre. Or whether it's put on the market. To be sold? Yes, the proceeds to go towards, well, towards building the new Ivy Art Centre. Mm. <laughs> How about putting the Goya up and then building the new Art Centre around it and then start classes? Or would that be putting the art before the course? <laughs> well, then we wouldn't have the money to start building the... 
Uh, Vicky, I'm a very busy man. Oh, yes, I am. I you are, darling. Well, when is Mr. Benson coming? Well, he should be here now. Now, I just heard a car pull up. Look out of the window, darling, will you? Is it an attorney with the mud of the airport still on his shoes and a bulging briefcase which probably holds an extra shirt and a seal? A seal? In that little briefcase? Uh, a notary public seal, dear. Oh, oh. <laughs> well, can you see him, our visitor, I mean? Well, yes, I, I, I think it's Mr. Willoughby. If it isn't Mr. Benson, Mr. Benson or Mr. Benson. On the other hand, of course, it could be Mr. Benson. <laughs> yeah, but I'll get it. Yeah, remarkable woman, my wife. Remarkable. How can a hundred be grand and then be a thousand? Very odd. William, here's Mr. Benson. This is ah. my husband, Dr. Hall. Good morning, Dr. Hall. Mr. Benson, I'm glad to see you. I was very interested in your letter. And on behalf of I. Uh, did, just a moment, I'm... Doctor. Uh, since my letter was mailed, a disturbing complication has arisen. Mr. Basil Willingdon, the eminent art critic, uh, declares the painting to be a fraud and not an original Goya at all. Well, there goes the nucleus of our art center before we even got it. Is Mr. Willingdon's decision final? Uh, not at all, Mrs. Hall. In fact, Mr. Willingdon has not seen the painting. Oh. His opinion is based on a communication he has just received from the Bernheimer Gallery in Bordeaux. Uh, they claim it is a work of no importance. Well, that seems to settle it. I'm not enough of a critic myself to argue with an established art gallery. Uh, however, on the manifest, it was declared by Mrs. Peters to be an old master, therefore free of duty. And Mrs. Peters was herself a connoisseur and an authority in the world of art. Uh, furthermore, her declaration has the endorsement of the best art critic in Paris. Well, things are looking up again. Uh, where is this painting at the moment, Mr. Benson? Uh, still in its crate at the New York docks, awaiting claim and clearance. Uh, Mrs. Peters died a few days after its arrival. Well, why can't they open it up and let the experts appraise it? And not without the authority of the owner. Mm. And according to the will, it is now, if accepted by you, the property of Ivy College. Well, I don't see how we can accept it until the mystery is cleared up. Emerson would turn in his grave if we hung a fraud in Emerson Hall. Toddy, <laughs> wouldn't it be just perfect for the Clarence Wellman Hall? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> That's just where Mr. Wellman wants it. What? Uh, I'm acquainted with Mr. Wellman, Dr. Hall, and knowing he was the chairman of your board, I telephoned him yesterday and informed him of my coming here this morning. Oh, I assume he is unaware of this dispute among the critics as to the authenticity of the painting. Uh, he is. That complication was only brought to my attention after I'd spoken to him. Mm, our friend Clarence is going to have a rude awakening. Well, unless Mrs. Peters is right, and Willingdon and company are wrong... Uh, there is one more factor to be considered, Dr. Hall. Well, if this gets any more involved, I'll paint a goya myself. Uh, Mrs. Peters in her will stipulates that the painting must either hang in Ivy College, be disposed of for Ivy's benefit, or Ivy may accept the sum of $5,000 as an alternative. The picture then to be sold for other charities. What is Ivy to lose? In the latter alternative, a great deal, should the painting turn out to be genuine. Yes, 5000 against a possible $100,000. Well, it seems we must just wait on Mr. Wellman and the board. Uh, I am to call on Mr. Wellman on my way to the airport with the papers for his signature. Oh, uh, one last formality. Uh, with the will, there was a letter addressed to you as president of Ivy College. As you see on the envelope, Mrs. Peters stipulated that it must be opened only after the acceptance of the request. Yes, I see. Thank you. Uh, goodbye, Mrs. Hall. Goodbye. Uh, goodbye. Goodbye, goodbye Mr. Wellman. Vicky? Yeah, yeah, I'm Toddy. Oh, I'm sorry if I'm late. Any messages? Yes. The president of the Royal Academy phoned. Oh, what did he have to... Who? <laughs> what on earth can he be? Well, then the vice president, Mr. Wellman. You know, Wellman, the art lover. The man who stole the Mona Lisa. Leonardo da Vinci's unauthenticated grandson. Oh, <laughs> yeah, he, uh, he wants you to call him. Well, after your description of him, anything I can call him will be anticlimactic. <laughs> oh, let him wait a minute. Let me put my feet up and enjoy these peaceful surroundings. May I make a suggestion? Uh, by all means, darling, what do you suggest? Before you put your feet up, you'd better sit down. You might have a nasty fall otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> a very sound idea, and I'll do it. Yeah, well, all right. Now, what about uh, Wellman? Yes. And what about the Goya? Is it true or false? Now that Wellman knows it's in question, 
Will he take the picture and the gamble? Or... Oh, the 5000 That's my guess. He'll take the cash. No gambler, he. Uh, and what about the mysterious letter from the late Mrs. Peters? There's not to be opened till Christmas. I, I mean, until the, until the request has been accepted. <laughs> what can the envelope contain? Yeah. That reminds me, Toddy. We'll have to be ordering some more stationery soon. And your envelopes are much too transparent. You can read almost anything through them, particularly if you dampen it with alcohol. Well, um... <laughs> Dora, I order some more, will you, darling, and tell him this time to be sure... Vicky, what are you dampening the, the alcohol? You, you've been beeping. Oh, how could you say such a thing? <laughs> I couldn't find any alcohol in the house. And, and holding it up to the window, that isn't beeping. Such nice... Uh, Oh, excuse me. Yeah, be an angel, darling, and see who that is while I get a quick wash. The angel on the wing, Toddy. And if this angel knows her hunches, it's Whistler's father, James McNeil Wellman. Good <laughs> evening, Mr. Wellman. My husband just came in. Uh, come in and sit down. I've only a few minutes, Mrs. Hall. Yeah, well, he'll be here in a moment. Now tell me, Mrs. Hall, you know something of art? Well, uh, is painting one's face over and over again, nights and matinees, is art, then I suppose. No, uh, yes, uh, you were an actress. I believe. Uh, it is possible <laughs> that you are better acquainted with art, uh, painting, that is, than a man of business like myself, or a man like Dr. Hall, who has limited his activities, his scope to college affairs. Uh, tell me, Mrs. Hall, uh, uh, what you know of a painter named, um, that is to say, of a foreign artist, a French, I believe. He went by the name of, at least he was called, his pen name, I presume, a big painting, seven feet high. <laughs> you mean Goya? Of course I mean Goya. Who else should I mean? Well, I... <laughs> I know a little about Goya. Most of his work hangs in the Prado, a famous art gallery in Madrid. He was probably Spain's greatest oh, painter. Mr. Wellman. Oh, yes. there you are, Toddy. Uh, Mr. Wellman has just been telling me all about Goya. Oh, yes, yes. The black Goyas, of course. Dr. Oh, Hall, I'm afraid I have too little time for your class in art appreciation. Oh. Uh, you've uh, heard of this uh, imposture, I understand. Uh, if it is an imposture, this uh, this uh, Goya painting that either is one or isn't in the terms of the will, uh, most unbusinesslike, uh, slipshod, I might say. Well, at least it was very kind and thoughtful of Mrs. Peters. I am quite aware of that, Mrs. Hall. I am uh, uh, not without my share, my fair share of human feelings. Quality of mercy is not strained. That is, uh, gratitude, I mean. Uh, Mr. Wellman. What is it? <laughs> uh, we, we do not question for one moment your good heart and warm feelings. Yes. Oh. No. Now, Mr. Benson gave me most of the facts, I think, before he left here to call on you. Then I must tell you, Dr. Hall, that I have just left a board meeting. Half the board were in favor of accepting this, uh, this uh, painting, so-called. The other half, including me, is in favor of taking the 5,000 cash and uh, ending the whole matter. Uh, the picture is uh, very probably a fake, in which case Ivy would get nothing. Let us be practical, Dr. Hall. Let us be businessmen. We must take the 5,000. Well, very well, but why come to me? The meeting agreed that you should cast the deciding vote. Mr. Wellman, I understood from Mr. Benson that you wanted to accept this painting to hang in Clarence Wellman Hall. Uh, that was where, when there was no question of fraud. Uh, and, and it was a large painting. And uh, uh, Clarence Wellman Hall is a large hall, Dr. Hall. Uh, and there is a bare space on the east wall that needs filling. As an art lover myself, and having always admired the work of... Uh, what's his name? I... I... <laughs> <laughs> yes, and I, I don't blame you. But I find myself in a difficult position, having to cast the deciding vote. If we take the picture and it is finally judged to be a genuine Goya, Ivy College will be the proud possessor of one of the great works of one of the great painters. And if the board should decide to dispose of it to some public trust or art collection, it should bring a very substantial sum of money. On the other hand, we have the option... Shut the hall! What is it? Shut the hall! <laughs> What is it? My time is valuable, and, uh, and this matter must be settled. I am quite willing that Mrs. Hall, with her knowledge of art, uh, the theater, that is, I, I've already discussed the matter with her, Dr. Hall, her undoubted acquaintance uh, uh, with the work of this so-called, uh, this uh, Van Goya. Goya. I said Goya. This man Goya, I said. <laughs> uh, I, I'm willing, I, I say, to uh, accept Mrs. Hall's decision. Well, Vicky. Well? What my personal opinion has to do with art criticism, I, I really fail to see. But I vote for taking the big chance. Take the gift in the spirit in which it was offered. Forget the small potatoes and the chicken feed. To heck with the consequences and the devil take the hindmost. I was thinking. <laughs> When there's beer on your mind, 
your best thought is Schlitz, the beer that made Milwaukee famous. More people like the taste of Schlitz than any other beer. That's why Schlitz is the largest selling beer in America. It's late the following morning, and Mrs. Hall is expecting the doctor home for lunch. Vicky. Here, yeah, Toddy. Lunch will be ready in a few minutes. Oh, no hurry, my dear. Faculty meeting isn't until 2.30. That'll give me a full hour after lunch all to myself. And I will wager you dollars to your Aunt Emily's donuts that I won't be permitted to get away with it. Mm. Now, there's a little gremlin that sits up aloft whose one malicious objective is to disturb the intercurricular catnaps of W.T. Hall. <laughs> it's just as well, perhaps, Tori. Helps you keep to slim, soigné, and svelte. Uh, coming from you, that's nice, Vicky. Mm. Last week, Mrs. Kuncannon referred to me as suave. Coming from anyone, that's nauseating, but from a, <laughs> from a professor's wife, it's treason. <laughs> but, um, uh, something is on your mind, my dear. The faintest of shadows flickers across your face. So treat me as an old family friend and tell me all about it. No, it's nothing, Toddy, but I'll give you just one guess who called. Wellman. He flicks as gruesome a shadow as anyone. Yes, yeah. <laughs> but he wouldn't tell me what it was. He says he'll see you later, and he sounded quite upset. I'm afraid I didn't use my vote discreetly yesterday. Ah, you chose to vote honestly. Well, what I mean, perhaps, is that I'm beginning to believe I was wrong. No, I think that your instinct was right. You chose the the bigger way. How much better to lose the gamble than to be in the ignominious position later of learning that the Boston Fine Arts Museum has acquired a masterpiece while Ivy has spent $5,000 on a station wagon and a new lawnmower. <laughs> now, when, 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 when you think... Why, well, 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 Vicky? <laughs> Thank you, my no, dear. No, darling, darling, Tori. I just had to hug you. You <laughs> don't know how relieved I am. Well, Them's the nicest words I've heard since... Well, since you said Happy New Year. <laughs> <laughs> I, I only, only said that... And I beg you not to move, my darling. I only said that your instinct will probably prove to be right again. In fact, whenever an issue arises that is outside the logical reasoning of, of an underpaid, though quite brilliant, college president, I, I have been content to leave it to you. Ever since Fanny Blair, as a matter of fact. Fanny Blair? Is she the redhead who won the Home Economics Award? Has she been sending you apples? <laughs> now, Vicky, I'm shocked. Not that the occasional apple may not agreeably lubricate the relations between master and pupil... Uh, sometimes referred to as esprit de corps. Uh, but I am shocked. <laughs> Have you forgotten your English folklore? And our walk across the meadows, from Bumbledon Ferry to Tipperton Town? Oh, yes. Of course, yes. And our problem at the crossroads, it was, it was just before we were married. Yes, it must have been late spring, because the laburnum and the lilacs were putting on a tremendous show. Admission free. In my anxiety to impress you with the English countryside, I, I was a little afraid they were overacting. <laughs> there was a rainstorm coming up, I remember. And we packed up the picnic basket and, and we were walking back to the station. Remember, Vicky? We'll have to hurry, I think, William. It's quite a walk back to the station. And it looks like rain. I hope we're on the right path. I can see a stile ahead for the signpost. Oh, what a wonderful day. Isn't it? Even when it rains, it's beautiful at this time of the year. I wasn't thinking only of the countryside, Victoria. I meant the day with you. Wonderful day, beautiful you, fortunate me. Thank you, William, dear. I've loved every minute of it, too. It's, it's been a picnic in every sense. After a week of grease paint, a day like this is better than any beauty treatment. Heaven only knows what I shall do when I return to America. Unless you... Unless I... No, no, I, I promised not to put any more pressure on, didn't I? You're to take as long as you want. It's only that... Only what? It's only that I, I can't help an occasional reminder... A tiny little nudge now and then. 
with it in a nice warm little nudge is, though. Look, look, we're here at the crossroads. Oh, oh, very symbolic. Crossroads call for either dirty work or momentous decision. <laughs> now, what does the sign say? Well, it says to the village, all right, but look where it's pointing. <laughs> two paths in two different directions, and the sign points right between them. <laughs> Good, honest British compromise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or plain British indifference. Well, which one should we take? Uh, you decide. Um. The left. It looks nicer. Good. Quick decisions. Gather no moss. Yeah, we've got no time to dilly-dally. Here comes the rain. Yes, we may have to run for it. You'll get wet. Well, I'm all right. I've got my raincoat. But what about you? Oh, oh, nothing could worry me less. Uh, trotting beside you, you see a happy man. There isn't a raindrop born today that would have the heart to touch me. <laughs> oh, William, look over there. Where? Oh, what luck. Oh, yes. Looks like an inn at the end of this field. By the big spreading chestnut. Fascinating. If the bla village blacksmith isn't standing under that tree with large and sinewy hands, I shall be disappointed. Well, we'd better take shelter for a moment. Ah, here we are. The door's open. What's this place called? There's the name up there on the sideboard. Oh, yes, I see. Oh, wonderful. It's called The Rose Revived. Now, what could be fairer? Here, William. Has a bench on the side. Look at those odd characters in the corner. 18th century. What's the lad singing? It's an old ballad. Fanny Blair, I think. Tale of a village maiden and some unrighted wrong. Listen. Till the judge cried, there's someone has tutored you well. The day that young Hegan was doomed to die, the people rose up with a murmuring cry. If we catch her, we'll crop her. She falsely has sworn. Ah, what lovely things happen with you, Victoria. Or is it because I'm in love? William. Dear William. The rain stopped. We must run. The barmaid tells me we're only ten minutes from the station. It seems I chose the right path. You certainly did, my dear. You certainly did. <laughs> Remember that day? Of of course I do. And ever since then, I've always had the greatest respect for your instinct. Well, I hope it lasts, because this time I may turn out to be the girl who took the wrong turning. Oh, nonsense, my dear. What you did was perfectly but right. I, I know, but you see, there's something else. Besides Mr. Wellman, there was a phone call from Mr. Benson, oh. and he said that this morning the Treasury Department, or the Customs, or I don't, something, claimed that there would be a duty to pay in the event of the Go Goya turning out to be a fraud. In which case, it will be valueless, and there can hardly be any duty on a worthless... Yeah, but Mr. Wellman... Oh, Toddy, if there are any charges or complications at all, a charm boy is really going to flip his lid, to use a handy little undergraduate expression. <laughs> uh, ne ne next Christmas, let's give him a top that he can blow whenever he... <laughs> uh, Dr. Hall speaking. This is Mr. Wellman. Did you hear from Mr. Benson, Dr. Hall? Uh, well, no, but Mrs. Hall spoke to him, and I haven't yet had a chance outrageous, to... outrageous, Dr. Hall. Simply outrageous. Now look at the mess we're in. I said mess. Oh, I don't think that we... That's just it. You don't think. And Mrs. Hall's fatal decision, fatal disastrous. And who's going to pay for it? That's what I want to know. Oh, duty, heavy duty, and on a forgery, too. Penalties, no doubt. Fines, heavy fines. Disgraceful publicity, too. Just because my advice wasn't taken, what's I be coming to? Changes will have to be made, Dr. Hall. Changes. <laughs> uh, Mr. Mr. Wellman. Uh, Mr. Wellman, please keep calm for a moment. If you remember, in Mr. Benson's letter, he said that... Oh, oh, wait a minute. Letter, le letter. Letter. Uh, 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 Mr. Wellman, I I'm sorry, but I'll have to call you back. I left the bathwater running. Oh, it's your bathwater this time of the day. What? Uh, hunch, my dear. Instinct, of course. The letter. Where's the letter? What letter? Mrs. Peters. We can open it now. Uh, top drawer of my desk. Uh, I couldn't think of a good answer to Mr. Wellman, and the letter may give me one. Yes, 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 Toddy. Well, it's not only a hunch, of course. Yes. What does it say? What does it say? What does it say? What does wait, it say? Wait, 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 wait. Here we are. <laughs> here, here. And... And in memory of my husband, to give to Ivy one of the finest examples of this great master's work that exists outside of Madrid. The, the overpainting, 
that was applied to conceal the masterpiece from the invading Nazi vandals and which has served its purpose can, of course, be easily removed. The real Goya is underneath it. The beauty and greatness of this classic work... Vicky, Vicky, get Mr. Wellman on the phone immediately. Tell him to come over and pour his troubled waters on our oil. <laughs> The other actors in our play tonight were Herbert Butterfield as Mr. Wellman and Ken Peters as Mr. Benson. Our music was composed and conducted by Henry Russell. Tonight's script was written by... Um, uh, oh, dear, wait a minute. Um, tonight's uh, script was written by Ronald Coleman. Well, thank you, my dear. I loved doing it. It shows I have more than one string to my bow. Well, as long as I only have one bow to my string, I'm going to let him take me home. Good night, everyone. Good night. We'll be seeing you next week at this same time at the Halls of Ivy, starring Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman. The Halls of Ivy was created by Don Quinn, directed by Nat Wolf, and presented by the Joseph Schlitz Brewing Company of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. We invite you to enjoy the Pulitzer Prize Playhouse on television on Friday night. Yesterday, by the way, the Pulitzer Prize Playhouse won the Emmy for the Best Dramatic Program on Television by the vote of the Academy of Television Arts and Sciences. This is Ken Carpenter speaking. Oh, we love the halls of Ivy that surround us here.